I wanted to go over the basics of uh, building your own Debian package on Linux. Um, I've only just started doing this, so uh, forgive me if I get anything wrong, but it seems to produce a working Debian package. So let's say, for instance, you've been making some basic programs or scripts, and you want to turn them into an easily installable package that you can distribute amongst your friends and what have you. Uh, you might look at using uh, the Debian packaging process. So you start with um, obviously your program. So I've got a folder here, GTK Link Lizard 1.5. And there's a script in there. So I'm just going to open that and get it so you can see what I've got there. So it's got a hash bang statement at the start here, which uh, just tells the system what kind of a, a script it is and what you would execute the script with, with Python in this case. And the file has also been made executable, which you can do through the terminal, or you can even look at the properties, and there's a permissions tab, and you can just highlight it there, or select it even using that, so make, it, make sure that's executable. I've also got a nice icon there for it, and there's a, another file here which is required by the program to work. So that's the basics there. The first thing we want to do is create a place to work in. So I'm just going to create a sandbox folder, which is where I'm going to store all the files for this particular build. So firstly, what you want to do is you want to have a folder with all the files in that you intend to have in your package, which has got the same name as the program it's the the rules are quite strict for the uh, for 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 how you've got to write the, the the file name, so there are certain characters. It's it's got to be lowercase. Um, you can use numbers, and you can have pluses or minus characters. You can't have any spaces or anything, and uh, you've got to generally follow the rules, uh, which are that um, you've got to have the the name of the actual program followed by the uh, version number. Um, it, if, if you don't follow that then unfortunately it won't package properly. So that's the first thing. And Once we've got that sorted we also need a, a launcher. So a launcher is uh, probably easily easiest made uh, by just right mouse clicking on the desktop and use the create launcher. So you would select what kind of application you've got there. So we've got application or application in terminal, depending on what you need. You would pop the name in here. Again, you probably want to just pop in um, just in kind of a lowercase with minuses, no spaces for now, just because uh, that's the way it likes it really. There's quite a lot of uh, stipulative things about this process so you just have to bear with me on a lot of these things. Um, the command would be where you intend it to be installed on the user's system at the other end. So in here you would put um, forward slash USR, which is Unix System Resources, forward slash share, which is the usual place where you would install um, the executable command for this program, and then just applications. And then forward slash, and then the name of our executable file, which is gtk link lizard.py. Um, so just pop that in here. And then a comment you could have, and then we just pop the description in there. So I've got this description all set out in here. I just take this small description here and copy that. I'm just going to pop that in the comment there. Okay, and just click OK there. 
and that creates our launcher on the desktop there. So I just open up this launcher in Get It here, just drag and drop it on. And we just go over the stuff that we've got in here. So we've got the icon there. We can put that in. Uh, you can uh, put the name in, in uh, for different languages and what have you. And then you've got the main one that comes up there. I'm probably not going to bother with these. Um, I'm just going to remove them. Just make it a lot simpler. And we've got the comment there in English. And I don't need that one either. Because we've got the, the comment here which will suffice. And the icon. Again, we're going to have this installed to USR share and then what we're going to do is we're going to have a folder for all of the files installed onto the uh, user system so I'm just going to put a gtk link lizard is going to be the name of the folder that we install to and then forward slash it's link lizard icon and it's a dot png I'll just double check that is that what it is yeah link lizard icon dot png so the executable is stored in USR share applications the icon is in USR share but then it's inside of a folder which is the same name as the program and one other thing to do is you're going to need to put in what do we need to do categories here yeah. so just put categories in here equals uh, that will so the categories describe um, whereabouts you're going to install this to the no menu at the top here so you put some keywords in here and the no menu basically uses those keywords to kind of work out what's going to be the best place to to put it in the menu depending on what what menus uh, your end user has so what you can do is you can look at um, some categories that other applications already use so if I just go to I just open Nautilus and go to USR. I happen to have that in my bookmarks. And then share. And then applications. And you can see all of the launchers for the various programs on your computer. So what you could do is you could take one that's going to be in a similar place in the menu. For instance, you've got the, the Firefox web browser there. Link Lizard uh, obviously is a, for internet links, so I want it to appear in a similar place as the Firefox one. So you can see in here they've taken the time to, to put all the different descriptions and names in for the various languages. You can go ahead and do that as well if you want. Uh, but you can see at the bottom here you've got the categories. And there's just a few keywords about, you see this one here, network highlighted here. So that's quite an important one. I'm just going to copy that one. Um, yeah, so I mean, I know some of the the uh, the keywords already. So if I just paste in network, you've got to make sure that you um, you have the same case. So if it starts with uppercase, make sure you leave that in, and then semicolon, and another few things. Uh, GTK. So happens that my program uses GTK, so I'm going to pop that in, um, and I'm probably going to put in GNOME as well. So these are just a few keywords, and when the uh, no menu goes through here, it'll kind of use that to work out where it's going to go. And I happen to know that that will, on my system, that pops the result and program just here in the internet section. So that should suffice. And another thing you, you need to do is you need to remove the hash bang from the top. Because um, A, it's not necessary, and B, it doesn't follow the Debian 
rules policy. So if I just get rid of that and save that. So I think we've got everything in there. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, one, the main thing is to just be wary of where your paths are for your executable and your icon. Uh, obviously, um, they're not going to be the uh, same path as they are in your system. Uh, they're going to be the resulting path that you end up installing it to on the end user system. So I'm quite happy with that and we don't need that anymore. And another thing to do is to just make sure that as it's actually it's already appeared with the icon and everything as the it's already installed on my system GTK Link Lizard. So it's the this launcher is already working but in your case until you get the files installed into the correct location on your system as if you're an end user this will probably not display the icon and it probably won't launch uh, your script either until you make the package and install it on your system uh, but as it's already installed on mine it's popped up uh, so I just need to check this just go to properties here which you can do with alt and enter run permissions and just make sure that this is executable as well so both the launcher and the main script need to be executable uh, you can get to the um, properties by other mouse clicking as well okay so that's everything that I'm going to need inside my program folder I've got my launcher and a nice icon there for it the executable script and the file required by the program so the next thing to do is to go back into your sandbox and compress the whole folder into a tar.gzip or tarball and once you've got that you need to copy that inside of this folder and open that folder up. Okay, so now we've got everything we need, all the program files plus everything tarballed up. So what I'll do now is open terminal and if I just change directory to the GTK link lizard directory and once we're in here we need to run this command which is uh, dh underscore make uh, if you don't have dh make on your system you will have to install it you can install it using sudo apt uh, get install and then I think it's just called dh make so you might have to look through the repositories for that um, yep yeah, but first you're going to need that program and then if you type in negative e that's the argument for um, inputting your email so I'm just going to input my email here so it just kind of signs the package with your email and you also might want to pop in the license so that's negative C and then space and the license in my case is GPL3 so that they've got set names these licenses so you might want to look that up in the manual for DH make before you uh, type that in and there's obviously set licenses that work with the Debian packages so you maybe want to have a read through that the particular license that we're looking at here is the the uh, the, the GPL uh, version 3 the GNU public license uh, it's it's uh, generally um, the recommended one it's the one that's easiest to implement as a lot of the things are already in place to package that license in with your uh, with your dev file so I'm just going to use that one for now and then finally you put in the negative F which is the file argument and then you put the name of your file in our case it's gtk link lizard dash 1.5 and then let's start ta dot gz and I'm just going to press enter and it asks what kind of package I want to make, so in our case we're just making a single binary package press S, enter and it just brings up the details 
and you just press enter to confirm and then it plops a load of files in your folder so in here you've now got uh, a folder called Debian which is what the when you package it up it will use that folder to decide how everything is going to be packaged and also if you go into the sandbox you'll see it's created um, an org.tar.gz so if at any point you uh, something goes awry or you need to start again you can you can go into this tarball and you can just um, un uh, extract that and that should be your files as you started so you can go back to square one and we'll go back into here the first thing that we need to do is delete the tarball that you put in there we don't need this anymore that was just for producing the Debian files and the next thing to do is to go into the Debian folder and there's uh, quite an intimidating number of files in here to go through but don't worry we can get rid of most of these in our case we're not going to need anything with the extension .ex which is uh, example files so it really is uh, quite an expansive process you can do a lot of different types of installations and you can stipulate a lot of different things so um, but for our our particular case we're not going to need any of these so I'm just going to delete everything with .ex and you also don't need either of the readme files uh, so I'm just going to delete the readme.debian and the readme.source and that whittles it down to a much more manageable number of files so I'm just going to delete all of those okay so we can leave the first two files as they are and we're going to firstly look at control so in here you've got the first thing you want to uh, probably change is the section uh, so section is uh, where the package will be in the repositories so the, these sections are all, uh, are all uh, available online so you can search online for the various given sections uh, I, I know that net is uh, probably the most applicable section for mine there's also main and, and what have you and so you can you can search online for uh, Debian control section and it should uh, you should be able to find the the various different uh, arguments that go in here so these are all set um, these are all set sections for for various programs so you'd have to have a look for that online um, also the maintainer it prefers it if you have a second name so I'm just going to pop that in there you can put your home page in here so this information in this particular file will appear when you first in, uh, install the Debian package and it opens up the, 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 the Debian, Debian installer uh, GUI or in my case it opens up the uh, Ubuntu software center so if you pop your information in here that generally comes up with that window so http pop our website in there so you put the home page of the project in there and there's also options here for for various other things as well like if you've got a git repository um, and then you've got depends here which are any uh, dependents uh, so this uh, required programs that you need installed on your system so in my case as it's a Python program I will add Python here as one of the dependents and and then the last thing to add to this file is a description so I already have mine worked out I've got use my short description here which goes in place of this and then my long description which I've got here and I'll pop that in here with the long description you want to keep this 
you obviously indent it here with a space um, but you want to keep it at a maximum of 80 characters if you go over that then it won't fit in with Debian policy as it needs to be able to fit on people who are running this in a, in a terminal and uh, they have a maximum um, width of uh, 80 characters so you need to kind of follow those guidelines there so I'm just going to pop this down onto the next line put a space in uh, just to indent it um, and probably here as well and there and I think I'll just take the spaces off the end so it's, I'd imagine that should be within about 80 characters and you can test this anyway, I'll just take the longest line here and I go to tools and document statistics and it's a selection here, characters with spaces 68, so that's well within uh, Okay, so that should be about the right length. And I'll just save that file there. So we're done with the control file now. And you also want to have a look at the copyright file. And again, you want to put your full name in here. And in my case, the program wasn't downloaded and doesn't have an upstream author. So just remove that section there copyright so you've got this uh, copyright section here but I'm just going to copy and paste this generated bit here but just put my full name in and take that and pop it here just paste it in and then also I'm going to remove these commented sections here and that denotes that I just want to use the standard uh, GPL version 3 license. Um, so yeah, you would have to obviously adjust this file if you don't intend to use a GPL v3 license, but it is easier to go with that. It does come preset up to allow you to use that license. Um, yeah, I'll just save that there. I think that's everything in this file. And the docs file just shows you any of your files that it's going to add to the docs folder so that the docs folder appears in USR share docs and then it's normally in a folder which is the same as your program name and in there it puts the uh, the copyright and it also puts the Debian change log I think and you can list any files that you want to include in the documents folder um, beware that a user might want to just delete any documents that your program installs so don't put anything uh, imperative in here to the operation of the program in, in, in our case we don't even need this file in here we're going to copy it separately because it's part of the it's, it's actually part of the program we're going to need that file so just save that as is just leave that empty, we don't need anything in there. And then the last thing is the rules. And this is probably the most complicated of all the files. It starts off looking quite bare, but uh, we're going to need to put a fair bit in here. So the rules is a, is a type of make file, and this is what's used by the Debian package to actually work out where and how to install it and how to compile your code, your source code. So to start off with it's best to work with a template. There are templates that come pre-installed uh, when you hang on, it's in here isn't it? Yeah, so they're pre-installed in USR share. Um, I think it's then in doc. So this is a document file that, that comes with uh, I think dev helper. There it is Deb Helper. Okay, so in here you've got examples. So if you just go to this path, uh, and these are all example rules files for for Debian packages. So 
Arch dot Arch is architecture uh, dependent. So if you want to make a rules file and your install is architecture dependent, you'd want to use this one. If your install is independent of architecture, you use this one. If you want to do an install that has a, a mixture of both dependent and independent um, installations, then you could use one of these multis. And then there's also the, the tiny one here, which is what it comes basically um, when you first use dhmake. And uh, that's uh, pretty much useless. You're not going to need that because there's, there's nothing in there. You're going to need a lot more in there. So I'll start off with using architecture independent because we don't care what architecture you've got and just drag that over and it gives you this um, this file here which is um, written by Joey Hess kindly written this for us to get us started and that kind of outlines the basics of what you want to do with your MIC file so if I just take all of this and copy it and then you can paste it into here well I would do but there are a lot of uh, a lot more things I want to pop in here so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you my example rules file that I've already made earlier here we go so this is based on the example that I've just shown you so if I just take all of this and copy it and paste it into our rules file here And the first thing you need to do is you need to basically describe the location and the name of all the files that you intend to install using this make file. So you give them a little name. So I've got my icon, my script, my launcher, and my links file. And then you can use uh, the dollar brackets, curda, close brackets, and that will actually determine the current director, excuse me, the current directory that the person is installing the Debian file from. So you can't guarantee whether or not that Debian file is going to be on their desktop when they install it, or if it's going to be in their documents folder, or off a, a USB flash or whatever. So if you just use this argument here, the, it will work out what directory it's currently situated in and, and then it's just a case of putting forward slash and the name of the actual file so we start by listing all of those and then finally you want to list the destinations that you intend to install these files to on the end user system so there are some rules to this you need to start with the Debian folder so you look at the current directory again. So this is where they've got the Debian package when they when they click on it. Then the Debian folder within that, and then within that you need to have a folder which is the same name as the program. And then what you do is you describe after that where you want it to be on the end user's system. So what you're actually doing is you're creating a kind of mirror of the of the file structure that you in, in, intend to install this on. So within the package will actually be a folder Debian GTK link lizard and then it will create a USR folder, a mirror of a share folder and then the actual um, GTK link lizard folder on top of that. So you just have to bear with me on this one. You, you, have, to, you have to do it like this. It creates a kind of a, a mirror thing. Uh, and then it uses that to work out where it's going to install it onto the user system. So you, you're not using a, a, a direct path. So you wouldn't just have, for instance, USR share GTK link lizard. You need to have this Debian and GTK link lizard in front of it and the, and the current directory as well. So once you've worked all that out, you, so you want to go down to the install section and you see here you've got the first thing that it does is called build and it builds the stamp and then the sec second thing it does is clean um, so then it removes the build stamp and what have you so you can put things in here for instance in the build section you can put um, 
any compiling you may want to do. Let's say you've got your source code in C and you want to use GCC to compile everything. That would be done in this section. And then afterwards you would use the clean section to remove any unnecessary files as a result of that process. And then after you've done that, you, you then need to put in the names of all the files that you intend to use. You pop them in the top here. So I've got them, I've already stipulated them here. So in order to reference them, you have to put them inside of brackets with a dollar sign at the start. So you've got icon script links and launcher there. And then after that, we've got this section here, which is the the guts of it where you kind of stipulate the actual installation. So the first thing that I need to do is create my directories. So make do and install. These are both just um, taken from uh, from bash. So these are just shell commands. Um, so we've got make do and then dest1 and dest2. So these are making these directories on the uh, on the user's system. So that's the first thing. And then the second thing is installing the files to these destinations. So what I've done is I've got the applications folder. As I said earlier, that's where you want to install the actual launcher, the desktop launcher. So you can see here that launcher gets installed to destination two. Everything else is being installed just in USR share GTK link lizard. And you've got these arguments here for them. Uh, so minus M is uh, changing the mode. So it's the permissions mode. If you don't know what that is, you can type in, um, we can have a look on terminal. You've got a manual for change mode, which is chmod. And in here is some information with regards to the various settings uh, and permissions that you can change it to. Or you can have a look online. The wiki is quite good on uh, change mode. It's quite easy to read. Um, and that will describe these what these various numbers mean so it, very basically you've got the first row is describing what the root user can do the second row describes what the groups can do and the third row I think describes what everyone can do or that what the end user can do and I think the seven stands for it's you can read it you can write to it and you can also execute it um, whereas five, I think, is maybe just read and write, and it's not executable. So there are certain um, conventions with regards to uh, what kind of permissions you would use to install various different types of files. So I think for a directory, I think it's pretty standard to use seven five five. I'm using full permissions for installing my script and launcher and then uh, just using 6664 I'm using the number of the beast just for the icon and the links so you might want to have a look online or have a look in the, the man page the manual page for uh, change mode so you can work out what's going to be the best for that and and that's about it that's pretty much everything everything else is handled by the the um, by the rest of the the make file which has already been um, kind of worked out for you with the with the example so that's everything there so just save that there and that's the rules file so that's the last one there done I've gone through all of those so we're still in the right directory here and the last thing to do is to actually build our package which you do using the fake root command so you need certain privileges in order to build the package in the first place but what you don't want to do is then produce the package or the resulting files with various root permissions which then don't allow whoever you give the package to to open it so easily or might mess with the install 
So it, it's wise to not use the sudo command while you build your package. Um, and also, if you did use the sudo command to build the package, it would actually run the make file live on your system and install the files to your system, which obviously I don't want in this case because I've already got them on my system and that would mess everything up. So you use fake root. So fake root just kind of gives you some of the permissions of uh, the sudo command but without the resulting files then having the various restrictions and permissions associated with that. So I think if you were to use sudo you would end up with all the files being automatically installed on your system as it runs the make file and then it would end up producing a Debian file which is locked and if you handed that on to someone they wouldn't be able to use it. So the command is a dpackage dpkg dash build package again if you don't have um, uh, the, the package uh, program on your system you'd have to install it um, and then negative f which is just the full package so that would include the source code and everything and then I think that's it we press enter and we just cross our fingers and hope that it builds the package properly make sure we've done everything right Fantastic, so full upload, original sources included. That means we've done everything right when we're editing our Debian files and we've uh, done everything to, um, to build our package. So that seems to have been successful. So if I just have a look in my, I'll just close this down now. I'll just have a look in the sandbox and you can see it's produced a load of files there, including a dev file. So that's pretty much it. You've pretty much built your first dev file there. One thing that you can do is you can use a program called Lintian to check the dev file to make sure that it meets the various requirements. Um, again, if you, you might want to install that if you haven't got that on your system. It, I don't think it comes as standard. If you wanted to install something, you can go sudo apt get get um, install uh, lintian just press enter it would ask for your password and it would install uh, I've already got it on my system so I don't need to or you could alternatively do that through synaptic package manager so once you've got lintian on there you can use that to um, is that spelled right? that's spelled wrong <laughs> there we go lintian and then we just drag and drop our deb package on there to make sure that we've created it correctly and we've followed all the various guidelines and things set out by uh, Debian. And we press enter, it takes a little while, it just goes through there and then it coughs out any problems we may have had. So we've got a few warnings here. So new package should close ITP bug. Okay, so unless you have filed an intent to package, you're always going to get this uh, this warning here and the warning underneath wrong bug number in closes. When you make an official Debian package, you have to file a bug report which stipulates your intent to package your particular program and when you create your program for the very first time the first thing that you would do is close that bug report so that would get rid of the first two Lint uh, Lintian warnings here um, and then we've got another warning here what's this one so desktop command not in package so it's whinging about uh, it looks like there's a warning here about my uh, hmm, it's a new one to me so I think I'll have a look for that one online so there seems to be another warning there with regards to my desktop launcher 
So I'm just going to go online and if I type in Lintian, I'm just going to type in the name of the warning and the first link here, it tells me more information about it. So desktop entry specifies a command that is not available in the package. In most cases, it's a typo or forgotten update uh, of the desktop file after the installation. Okay, so it doesn't look like it's going to be a major problem, but it, it seems I've probably just named something wrong or missed something out of the name. But if I'd been more careful, I'd imagine I should have been able to avoid that warning. So any, anyway, so this is quite a helpful program here, which despite the fact that we've built what seems to be a fully working Debian package, there are various different um, warnings and things that could pop up on here. Like I said, just ignore the first two because they'll come up anyway if you're just building a package for your own purposes or for just distributing amongst your friends. Uh, however, if you're making a, a, a full uh, Debian package that you intend to upload to a Debian repository, you would you would have to file an intent to package bug report initially, and then you'd be able to you'd be able to eradicate those warnings. Um, personally, I would also go back through and see what I've done that's uh, caused the command to be not in package, whatever that means. Um, but aside from that. We should have a fully functioning dev package now. So we just double click on this package and depending on what uh, install you've got, what Linux install you've got, it will open either Ubuntu Software Center or I think sometimes it opens its own little installer GUI. And so yeah, it comes up with all of the description in here and it comes up with the website there. I'll just check that, make sure the website works. Excellent. So I spelled that right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so this is the information you can see here that we put into the control file that pops up. You can see it's already installed on my system, so I'm not going to bother installing it, but you could just install from here. And you'd also, because of the way that you've um, you've made the make file, where you've stipulated the names of the files and the and the destination using that crazy kind of mirror thing with the paths it will actually know exactly where it's installed things and it will give you the capability to uninstall the package successfully and yeah so that's pretty much it basically and you can see if you go into the uh, sandbox again and you go into the Debian folder and you can see you've got uh, a folder called GTK Link Lizard in here now which wasn't in there before and if we go to that folder, we've got here USR, share. So these are mirroring where you're going to install it to. And then you can see they've, also, they've got the applications there. And you've got the dock and you can double check over things. So you've got that stuff there, which is the uh, documents, files that automatically get copied over, such as the copyright and what have you. Um, And there we go, we've got all the files installed in uh, USR Share GTK Link Lizard. So on the uh, in the package, sorry, they're inside of the Debian folder, but once you install it on the system, they're just in USR Share, app uh, not application, sorry, GTK. There it is. So there you can see them actually installed on my system. So hopefully that would get you started on making your first package. I have to admit that this was my, my first package. And I have to say thanks to everyone on the Debian mailing uh, list, the Debian mentors mailing list, who helped me out with this. Um, it, it is quite a complicated process. You do have to be very patient with it. And it's not likely to package properly the first time unless you're extremely lucky. Yeah, so that's the basics of it, and I hope that helps a few people out.